Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Flix Bros. I'm Brandon. This is my brother, Wade, and we're going to be reviewing Eternals today. It's a special review for us. This is our very first review, so I hope you enjoy. And out of the two of us here, I'm definitely the MCU nerd, but I mean, I'll be completely honest here. I'm going into this movie not knowing really what it's about. This is a lesser known Marvel property. Um, I haven't read the comics by any means. Um, I pretty much live and breathe MCU. Wade's not as big a fan as I am, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, the, our different thoughts on this project. Yeah, I think as far as on Marvel, uh, kind of on that piece too, is just that Eternals is definitely a different type of, uh, I guess, really at the end of the day, a genre for really Marvel too, is that this is a completely different take on what you've been seeing as far as in the last 26 installments as far as on movies. This movie introduces us to a whole host of new characters. The Eternals were put on Earth 7,000 years ago and have lived amongst us. And they're here for one sole purpose, to protect us from the evil deviants. Ooh, <laughs> scary beast. The reviews are in on Rotten Tomato and they're definitely conflicting reviews. Uh, critic score is 51% currently. That is way, way worse than the worst Marvel movie up to this date. It is on pace to be the first Marvel movie ever to be a Rotten Tomato score. I think the next closest one is 66%, which is Thor of the Dark World. Uh, I think we can all agree that that is not exactly the movie we want to be comparing this to. On the other hand, though, audience score, 86%. I, quite frankly, I'm somewhere in between. Uh, one seems a little high. The critic score seems a little low. I don't know. What do you think, Wade? Yeah, I think for the most part, as far as on the overall movie, I think they did a really good job as far as on actually making uh, just a new feel to Marvel uh, in a nutshell. So I think that's probably also why it's a little bit split for audience score versus where kind of the experts are on that piece is that everything kind of segues a little bit differently now with Marvel. And it's a nice little refreshing taste for the audience score. And kind of like what he had said as well is just that we're kind of split in the middle as far as on what it is. Um, but I think in general, the character development is really what kind of hit home for the new expansion of where Marvel's going. The Eternals cast has a wide variety of people who are actually big names that you definitely hold near and dear to your heart. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. Uh, it'd be good just to hold them down by okay. your side. Yeah, great. Angelina Jolie, Salma Hayek, and you have Richard Madden. A lot of these big names that you're definitely very familiar with and some not so big names that are coming to the overall cast as well. But filling out the overall Eternals cast as a whole, the 10 of them did a phenomenal job. You know, some definitely had a little bit more uh, starlight as far as on what they were to me and probably even to Brandon as far as on differentialities of who really stuck out the most. So, Brandon, like, what do you think as far as on some of the characters, like, who stuck out to you the most? I really enjoyed Don Lee's character. I know one that we kind of talked back and forth about was uh, Kamal Nanjianani. Hope I'm not butchering his name. <laughs> I always do. But, uh, I mean, he was the comedic relief for the movie. Uh, it really stuck out to me. I mean, don't get me wrong, he was funny, but this was a very serious movie. So it sometimes even took me out of the movie. Yeah, I mean, as far as in the middle of the movie, there was um, there was quite a bit there that he he really did do a good job as far as on the, the comedic relief, just like kind of like you're saying, really. I mean, but in the generality, yeah, it kind of took away with from some of the premise of the movie and where it was kind of leading to. Um, so you're not really quite sure as far as with the overall character and where the development will go from there. It was, I mean, quite frankly, it was really good to see Angelina Jolie back on the big screen. I mean, I don't think you thought the same as I did, but... I really enjoyed her character. I thought she did a really good job. Uh, it's been a long time since we saw her in anything big. So, you know, it was a great thing to see again. Um, Selma Hayek, on the other hand, you mentioned earlier. What was her character's name again? Yeah, Ajax, the, a the villain. The, like the dish soap? Yeah, like the, the dish okay, soap. Yeah. He got Ajax from the dish soap. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just can't get on board with Salma Hayek. I, I watched Hitman's Bodyguard's Wife or the Hitman's <laughs> Wife's Bodyguard, whatever that movie was, they were just a dumpster fire. <laughs> I just cannot see that character as any or her as any other character but that. It just I don't know. It took me out of it. I just can't see her any other way. I'm sorry. <laughs> One big focal point for me as well would be the overall immersiveness that the movie kind of put you into every single setting along the way, whether that be from costumes, wardrobe to CGI, the overall cinematography. They did a phenomenal job on actually just making you be a part of every single setting 
every step of the way. Um, there's a lot of different things to cover throughout the whole entire movie and a lot of different timelines, really. And they did a really good job as far as on actually keeping everything in, in line and making you really feel a part of it. Um, on the CGI, I mean, like, I mean, the CGI was, again, it's a Marvel movie, so I mean, there's gonna be a lot of CGI, and there are definitely some big moments in there. But I mean, there are a lot of the fight scenes during the movie that were, I mean, there's CGI in it, yes, but it's very tastefully done. Um, you don't get lost in it by any means. Uh, I, I definitely enjoyed the visuals of the movie more than anything. Um, I mean, it, it almost, it's almost an epic. But another thing I really enjoyed about this movie is really the exploration of humanity. You have these godly, immortal characters that are, you know, thrown into living side by side with humanity for 7,000 years. They see all the terrible things that we've done throughout history, and they have to stand by and watch this. Do they interfere? Do they not interfere? You know, it's a moral dilemma. And if they don't interfere, is that on them? Uh, it's a big question asked by the movie. I kind of wish they would have explored it even more. But uh, definitely one of my favorite parts of the whole movie. Uh, there's a lot of character development there um, and something that I would be interested to see going forward with these characters. Yeah, and I think a lot of that, too, as far as on the actual acting that behind, like we talked about, like the big names like Angelina Jolie and a lot of the smaller people coming up, too, as far as on, again, like Don Lee did a phenomenal job, too. But you take these characters who are so enriched as far as with the deep sense of that they literally are immortals, like nothing can touch you, right? And they bring it down to actually be able to kind of peel it back like an onion of all these human emotions and <laughs> actually able to... Onions have layers. Eternals have layers. Onions have layers? You get it. We both have layers. <laughs> look at things and really just gauge that to you as an audience. Like that was a really cool way that they were able to kind of spin everything with so many different personalities, different actors and actresses, and all of them really just did a phenomenal job as far as on actually playing the part and really kind of bridging that gap between the fact of being an immortal and not really caring about anybody and having the human emotion connection as well, just due to them being on earth. And kind of talking about the overall things that we we do like is that that really kind of resonates with the, like what a lot of the audience score was in reference to as far as on probably what both of us kind of think there as far as in the 86%. But the 51% as far as in the critic score, there definitely is merit to that overall piece as well. I mean, taking a look at kind of the dislikes that we have, probably one of the biggest ones that hits home with me would just be the overall pacing of the movie. Really the first probably 45 minutes to an hour of the movie, you have all of these characters that are brand new to the Marvel Universe and really even for us is that we didn't really know who they were. We weren't big comic book people. And, you know, if you're kind of in the same boat as us, is that that's a lot of information to cover during that time. So you have all these new story arcs and everything trying to build up and trying to actually get all of this information just jam packed and really just kind of turned into a slow process for the start of the movie. And then really through the middle of the movie, I mean, most of it's kind of a little bit off in some places like. What do you think? Absolutely. I mean, the character the character development, I mean, so many characters to throw into this. Um, some of them got developed a little bit. Some of them had, you know, their own tidbits in the movie that really didn't add anything to it for me. I mean, it's hard to talk about this without going into detail. But, uh, no, I completely agree with you on the pacing. Um, it, it's super, super slow for the first 45 minutes. I mean... I could get on board with it, but then all of a sudden it becomes a Marvel movie again, and it takes you right out of it. And it, like, you know, somebody throws out a quip, and the serious moment gets turned on its head. I mean, kind of reminds you of Thor Ragnarok. You know, you have or you have Asgard blow up, and then Korg chimes in with all those foundations are gone, and it just that took me right out of the moment. I mean, uh, that's how I felt for the whole you know second act of this movie, really. And, uh, you know, third act picks back up again. Really, was probably the best thing about the movie, or the best act of the movie. But, uh, you know, the pacing was all over the place. The direction was all over the place. And one other really big issue I had with this, and I don't know if other people will agree, but the scale of this movie was monstrous. I mean, unprecedented for the Marvel Universe. It definitely is going a different direction. But what does that mean for the rest of the universe? Once you see the movie, you'll understand what I mean. But it, it makes something like the Thanos snap really irrelevant i mean it's it's the scale of this is just so gigantic gigantic i cannot you know express this enough that i'm not sure you know what the rest of the universe even means at this point after we get this movie and then with how bad this movie has went over so far hopefully you know these reviews go up 
I mean, are they still going to run with this? Is it going to be irrelevant after a while? Uh, this this one worries me. The direction of the MCU right now for me is pretty muddled. I the first two movies have not really seemed like MCU movies to me. Um, I, I kind of harken back to Phase One when I wasn't super excited about every Marvel movie. It didn't have that heart. It didn't have that you know come togetherness of each movie where. Uh, every movie, you know, made you reference to another one and just where it felt like an MCU. This just feels like its own separate movie. And it would be great if it was its own separate movie. But when you put it in terms of the MCU, I'm just not sure I loved it. So in summary, didn't love it, didn't hate it. I mean, I can definitely see both sides of the fence here. I can see why the critics hate it. I can see why the audience loves it. Um, hopefully though the scores kind of meet in the middle as we get more and more reviews into Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, if, if you put a lot of credence in that, but, uh, I mean, I definitely suggest you go to the theater and watch this. I am the MCU nerd here. So, I mean, I'll let Wade comment on it, but definitely go to the theater and watch this movie. Yeah. And I, I would agree as far as on actually going to the theater and making sure just to check it out, take a group of friends and actually just go to go and experience the movie. Cause I, I wouldn't put, uh, the crazy amount of merit into the bottom side of those scores. It's definitely worth watching and definitely worth going to the theater for and really maybe even two or three times because there's just a lot of information in the story to really go off of but in general i guess i'll let you give your score first what are your thoughts uh i mean honestly this hurts me to say but scale of one to ten i'll probably be about a 6.3 on this one i mean it uh had its good points but it, it did not hit home i'm not i'm not super excited to go see a second one and i'm not quite it's not really rewatchable to me so 6.3 is what i'm going to give it what about you yeah uh yeah i think in general as far as on like my overall score it's probably at like a 6.6 um i think in, as far as in rewatchable yeah i mean i'm not so i wouldn't be super excited to like go and watch it again as far as on like you know big cinematic hits where you you really just want to go and experience it again because it was just that cool the first time i want to say it's like that it's more or less just that you're really trying to get involved with the marvel universe and trying to really dive into the story and just get a better understanding of it you know the second go around probably but yeah i'd say 6.6 .6, so we're pretty much about on the same page there yeah, surprisingly, this doesn't happen very often. <laughs> yeah, usually it's arguments back and forth about why I hate something and he doesn't hate something. So usually it uh, doesn't really meet in the middle. So I guess we're kind of, uh, you know, beating the system on Rotten Tomatoes, I guess. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can see videos whenever they do go live, especially for the spoiler review. Um, and make sure to comment below and tell us what your thoughts are as far as on the overall movie. Again, no spoilers on this one, please. Don't put it in the comments there. But as far as in the next one, when the spoilers do come out, make sure to give us your thoughts. We'd love to know what your um, overall scores are, too, and make sure to put those in there, too. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks, guys.